What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American here today to react and continue learning about foods only found in the United Kingdom. If you haven't seen part one of this little series, feel free to go check that out or be, be unique and start on part two, whatever you want. Anyway, I couldn't have imagined that uh, there were so many foods that I didn't know about. I thought I knew something about food in the UK, or at least w there wasn't going to be so much stuff that I didn't know, but basically in part one, jeesh, what did we have? Marmite, clotted cream, clotted cream, excuse <laughs> uh, crumpets, which I finally learned what a crumpet was, thank goodness, pork pie, don't get me started, haggis, wow. Yeah, I still am kind of wondering how common some of these dishes are actually eaten, how regularly, because some of them are kind of fancy in between you and me, some of them are just downright disturbing to me, but <laughs> that's okay, I'm ima I imagine there's many, many American dishes that disturb lots of people outside of America, it's all good, it's all good, this is about appreciation of, <laughs> uh, as best of my ability appreciation of these UK foods, and some of them do look fantastic. Others, I'm just not used to, but they are all very interesting to me. So I'm quite excited to continue this little journey on foods uh, only found in the UK. So let's take a look. Pasties. So a pasty is a- Okay, hold on. Before they uh, talk about what it is, I like to give my first impression. I have never in my entire life heard of a pasty. Sounds like pastry, doesn't? Pasty. Pastry. Pasties. I'm looking at the little picture they have there at the bottom. It's, uh, almost looks like one of those cornucopia Thanksgiving things. I don't know if that makes sense. Or like a taco that's been sealed together. It appears to be stuffed with things. Huh. I don't know what kinds of things. It's bready. Anyway. I, I think as far as some of the foods I've seen so far, this looks decent? Okay, I'm just a little scared about what's inside of it. Baked pastry that is stuffed with meat and vegetables. And yes, okay. it is as delicious as it sounds. For okay. my American friends, it looks like a calzone, but it's better. Uh, yeah, calzone, right, okay. <laughs> I was coming up. I was coming up with such dumb analogies, and yeah, <laughs> now that I think of it, and uh, he's correct. It does look like a calzone. So it's oh wow, this sounds good. Stuffed with meat and vegetables. It's very, very hearty, very wholesome sounding. Okay, yeah, I think I imagine Americans would love this. This sounds good. When we first visited the UK, we did not know how to pronounce this food. We didn't yeah. know whether it was pasty or pasty. And right. Thankfully, our good friend Sean was able to set us straight and tell us that it was a pasty before we made too big of fools out of ourselves. Okay. And from what we've heard from our friends in the UK, the origin story behind pasties is that they come from the city of Cornwall. And way back in the day, there were these miners working under the ground, and they were working with some toxic material. I don't okay. know which one it was. And so they had a problem, which was every time it came time to eat lunch, they would touch the food, the toxins would get from their hands to the food, they would eat the food and poison themselves. So in an effort to keep from poisoning themselves, pasties were invented. Wow. I mean, this is like the first time for any of these uh, dishes that they've given like a fascinating his history. Uh, I don't know if pasties in particular just have like a super interesting backstory, but... I like it. I like it. These were invented for like a very specific purpose. So, so that workers didn't have to directly touch the food, but you, you gotta touch like the outside of it. Maybe that makes it more okay. All right. I'm not going to try to sit here and dissect exactly. I'm sure it was better than touching the meat and vegetables. So very good. And that's why they have the crimped edge, is because the miners would hold that crimped edge while they eat, oh. and then the toxins would only get on the crimped edge, and then they'd finish and throw the crimped edge away. Oh, there you go. There was even an explanation for it. Wow. Okay. Yeah, those miners are much smarter than I, I am, apparently. They actually thought about that. That's actually pretty cool. And then it's just, uh survived to this day as like some kind of cultural 
UK like dish. That's pretty cool. That's the best part. I want to learn how to make them. If you have any good pasty recipes, drop them in the comments below. Also, let us know if the origin story that we've heard behind pasties is fact or fiction. Oh. Mushy peas. Oh. <laughs> I like how they just jump right into the next one. Mushy peas. This reminds me of the clotted cream that I reacted to in part one. It's like something I know with a word in front of it that confuses me. Mushy peas. Mushy peas? That Does that just mean peas that have been mushed? Is <laughs> I, Obviously, my powers of deduction here are top-notch. Incredible. Um, is there, but is there something more to this? Because that looks like more than just peas. Almost like gravy and peas. I like peas. <laughs> Let me be clear, I've never heard of mushy peas, ever. So I'm not quite sure what makes it the dish. But it seems like I, I might like it. Mushy peas? Mushy peas? Mushy? 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 mushy. mushy. <laughs> it's mushy. We got mushy? Mushy. mushy. I, think, I think it's mushy. Mushy. Oh my gosh. Mushy peas or mushy peas? I don't know. Does that make a difference? It's so People are going to be like, they're saying the same thing! <laughs> they're well, saying the same thing! I think, well, in the States, we pronounce it mushy. So I'm assuming it's mushy. Is yes. The UK. I also think that it's mushy. Mushy. Okay. So, <laughs> besides okay. that small linguistic difference, there is another thing to be said about mushy peas. The first time we encountered it was in London. We were at this pub. I ordered fish and chips and it came with a side of the mushy peas. And at first glance, I thought, is that wasabi? <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, I mean, he's right. It doesn't exactly look straight up like peas at all. So yeah. Yeah, it was very confusing. And then I decided I'd take a bite and see, and I lifted it up with a spoon and okay, those are peas. I see they're just smashed peas basically. Okay. And then I ate it. And then that's when my mind really exploded. What is this? <laughs> yeah. Taste buds are so confused because the confused. flavor is not really something, it's not really a flavor combination that you would ever imagine. Really? Yeah. Oh, so from what they're saying, uh, basically the mushy peas don't even taste completely like peas, right? Is that what I'm getting here? What mushy peas are is peas smashed and infused with mint and sugar? Yes. There's, cause it, there's a bit of sweetness to it yeah, as well. So it's mint. Mint. Mint? Infused with mint and sugar. Peas, mint, and sugar. I would never in a million years have guessed that. Mint? I just don't eat any foods like with mint besides mints. <laughs> Okay. Kind of like a sweet side that goes with savory things, but it's peas and mint. Yeah. What? Which is not a combination you would see in the States. Mm -hmm. So I was very surprised. Plus, I have no, I don't even know what to think of this. I, don't, I like mint flavor, but with peas, we have mint ice cream. We have mint candy, but not mint with like kind of regular food i don't i don't know my brain's fried with this one i'd like to try it i'd like to try it pleasantly surprised though because it's not a bad combination to practice my <clears throat> subdued british compliments it wasn't bad digestives okay. <laughs> what digestives uh this is some kind of cookie or biscuit um is the brand name digestives or are all things shaped like this called digestives? Do they help you digest? I have a lot of questions about this. In interesting name. Now, unlike the name suggests, I don't think that this is actually for digestion purposes. Okay. Is that Why are digestives called digestives? Because yeah. the name does not match the wonderful beauty which is the cookie. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean if I had just heard this, I would have thought it was a medicine or something, like medicine for digestion. It, it actually just looks like a snack or something. It looks good. Biscuit. Biscuit, yeah. Biscuit. Just get it right, man. <laughs> I had never heard of digestives before going to the Me UK. Me neither. Have you? No. Yeah. So it was a pleasant surprise. 
The folks we were staying with had a pack of digestives in the cupboard, and for a few days I avoided it because it just, you know, it doesn't... The word digestives yeah. makes you think of some healthy organic cracker, which is... Laxative. Of, yeah. It's full of, like, <laughs> flax or something. That's exactly. Like, the name. I guess people in the UK are just very used to this uh, name and being associated with this treat that you eat, but it's very, like, uh, kind of jarring for an American. It's supposed but to bring on the bowel movement. I was thinking it was a flax biscuit, basically. Okay. But then eventually, uh, we, we pulled them out, served them up, and they were delicious. And okay. after that, for the rest of our time staying in the UK, we didn't stay anywhere longer than a day or two and not get a package of digestives and yeah. put them in the cupboard. Yeah. Really? They're so good. Wait, wait, so after they discovered the digestives, they like kept purchasing them? Digest, let me Google it. Digestives. Biscuit, yeah, it comes up. Look at this. Um, oh, here's the description. This one really is kind of confusing me. A digestive biscuit, some kind, sometimes described as a sweet meal biscuit, is a semi-sweet biscuit <laughs> originating in Scotland. Really? I mean, look at this, you can buy them on Amazon. Wheat biscuits, okay. Wow, okay. You know, dipping them in tea or dipping them in coffee. Uh, I hope that's what you're supposed to do. That's that's what we did. <laughs> Stinking Bishop. <laughs> Come on. I mean, with some of these names, what are you, what am I supposed to do with some of these names? I'm not trying to be judgmental, but I gotta, <laughs> my first instinct is like, <laughs> With some of this stuff, the uh, clotted cream, the mushy or mushy peas, and now the stinking bishop. You, it sounds like an insult. You stinking bishop. <laughs> it's a. Uh, is this cheese? It looks like cheese. Why? Why? Why the word stinking in it? Why? Okay. All right. I'll, I want to give it a chance. Now this is a type of cheese that okay. is washed in fermented hair juice, and like the name suggests, it is extremely smelly. It makes all of the oh. lists. If you Google stinkiest cheeses on earth, this is on all of the lists. Wait, what? It, it's supposed to be stinky? <laughs> oh my god. There is no, there's nothing like this in America. I can say that. <laughs> is this popular? Like part of the experience is that it smells. That's just part of it. I don't know. Smell is such a big part of taste. Like, I feel like I'd have trouble getting past that. Maybe you get used to it. I don't know. How popular is this? And yeah. yes, we actually had some. This was at a cheese shop in Bath. We stayed there for five days. Not the cheese shop, but the city. And <laughs> Basically the cheese shop, though. We went there yeah. like every day. We went to the okay. cheese shop every single day and would buy 200 grams of cheese and then go eat them for dinner. And then sample a whole bunch. And it was really fun. The shopkeeper was a blast and would have us, you know, make great conversation, let us try different things. Oh, wow. That would be cool. They went to like a whole a place dedicated to cheese. <laughs> dedicated to cheeses that would actually be awesome okay i mean again with a lot of the stuff you gotta try it like no matter what you think about it i feel like to get the true uk experience you'd have to try it so that day we were like okay we've been pretty brave so far trying some pretty crazy cheeses <laughs> what is the stinkiest cheese in this shop and he said have you seen wallace and gromit and the curse of the were rabbit and we said yes and he said, well, this cheese has a cameo in Wallace and Gromit and the Curse of the oh. Werewolf. And following that movie's release, the sale of Stinking Bishop went up by about 500%. Really? Crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. So this cheese is kind of famous. Um, or infamous? <laughs> is it famous in a good way or a bad way? It stinks. But maybe that can be saved if it tastes amazing or something. <laughs> so we tried it, and my gosh, it was literally the worst thing I've ever put in my mouth. <laughs> the, what, the way I've described it in the past is it was like someone wore a pair of woolen socks for a month, took them off, dipped them in toilet water, and then stuffed them right into your mouth. That's, that's very specific. Uh, so, all my efforts to like uh, make a case for the stinking bishop 
Um, not needed, because the, I mean, is the point of this cheese that it's just extreme and <laughs> it's like about the experience? It smells bad. It tastes horrible, like socks. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised the sales like are as good as they are. It just kind of sounds like one of those extreme things that is just fun to try once and then never again, ever. But it had to be like warm toilet water too. Warm toilet water. Oh, yeah. it was just so nasty. Bad. And in the movie, if you have not seen *The Curse of the Were Rabbit*, in the movie, this cheese is used to, I believe, bring Wallace back from a state of unconsciousness. He's either <laughs> yeah, unconscious. They, they waft the cheese. Yes, and they make okay. him waft the cheese while he's unconscious, and then he wakes up because the okay. smell is that powerful. And it is. It would. The smell would not wash off our hands for several days. What? Just a realistic question for you guys. Is Stinking Bishop the type of cheese that you actually eat for pleasure? Like, is there a scenario in which you're having a dinner party and you take out the Stinking Bishop and everyone's like, hmm, this is such great cheese, or- I, I, that's exactly what I'm thinking about, is it really does sound like this cheese is like for a shock factor, it's for an experience, it's kind of fun, and while you're torturing yourself at the same time, I have a hard time believing this is super common and super popular day to day, like you're eating this on a daily basis. I mean, how could you? You'd smell like stinky cheese all day, but okay. Uh, but still satisfies the requirement of being something that's only in the UK. I've certainly never heard of this. And it, it, it's fun for what it is, I guess. Or is it more of just like a novelty thing? Like, yeah. this was in Wallace and Gromit. Oh, it's yeah. so funny. I'll give it to yeah. my nan for Christmas. That's a joke. Toad in a hole. Toad in a hole. Toad in a hole. This almost sounds familiar, but there's a lot of stuff that sounds kind of like this. Blank in the blank. <laughs> I don't know why that's so... It seems like every country has a blank in the blank. Toad in the hole. This looks like sausage. Um, I'm looking at the pictures. This looks good. Sausage in a, a baked bready thing. I'd like more details, but it has a funny name. This has a funny name, like very UK name, <laughs> but uh, it looks good. When we were in the UK, we went over to some friend's house, actually Connie and Jeff, who we mentioned earlier, and we had this great conversation all about foods which we love. And one of the topics that came up was toad in a hole. Okay. And toad in a hole. I mean, that's definitely, <laughs> if you go to the UK and someone's like, let me make you some toad in the hole. And you're an American or something, you don't know what they're talking about. If that's all that I got, I would be scared. I would be <laughs> like, oh, whoa, okay. I don't know about this toads in the holes or, but seeing a picture of it, it actually looks nice. I think Jeff mentioned it offhandedly. You know, toad in the hole is a great dish. And they're <laughs> like, yeah, it's not bad. You know, it's all right. And then we continue talking about toad in a hole and then realized, <laughs> I don't remember how exactly we realized, but that we were talking about different things. Huh? Because in America, toad in a hole looks like this. What? Okay, I don't, I, I don't know what state they're from in America, but where anywhere I've lived, I have never heard of toad in the hole. I don't associate toad in the hole with anything, let alone a piece of toast with an egg on it. But, you know, I learned something about America today. Apparently there's Americans who have this as well in a different form. And this exists in the UK as something completely different. Okay. I don't think the, I gotta say, I don't think most Americans have heard of even the Ameri American version of this. I could be wrong, I guess. Just my personal experience. While in the UK, toad in a hole looks like this. Mm. If I'm being perfectly honest, I think the American toad in a hole makes a little bit more sense. <laughs> in like, it actually looks it, like in something picture. in a hole. Yeah, it's something in a hole. Whereas okay. like the UK version doesn't okay. quite look like a toad in a hole. Although, to be fair, it does look better, more tasty to me. I don't know, the little sausages kind of look like little toads kind of hi hiding. I don't know, I'm trying, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, then the American one is just toast with egg. 
Mm -hmm. So it's a bit boring. Yeah, it is a bit boring. Some mom is like, how can I make this breakfast different than yesterday? I know, I'll <laughs> chop a hole in the piece <laughs> of bread and throw an egg in there. British toad and all is sausages that are baked into Yorkshire pudding. Okay. In America, we eat toad and a hole for breakfast. Uh, what is Yorkshire pudding again? York, Yorkshire, as I would say, pudding? What is this? So the toads, the uh, uh, sausages are baked into this? Yorkshire pudding is a baked pudding. A baked pudding made from eggs, flour, milk, water? Common British side dish. Huh. This like looks like a pastry, not a pudding. That's the thing is uh, in the UK, pudding takes on a completely different form than what Americans think of pudding is. Uh, I just think of it as this mushy chocolate dish, and that's pretty much it. But pudding takes on a whole new life. So you put some uh, sausages in the Yorkshire pudding. Okay, I mean, it looks gr great. Like, it looks very good. I'd eat that. In the UK, is it the same way? Is Toad and Hole a breakfast dish, or is it a lunch dish? Right. And is it for certain holidays? Now that's what I'm wondering, because it does look like kind of a festive dish. And now we're going to turn the conversation over to you! If you've been a tourist in the UK, what was a food that surprised you? And if mm. you are British, what is a food that you would recommend we try on our next visit to the UK? Drop it in the comments below. Again mm, okay, well I think that's the end of this video. I like that. that there's probably so many more British uh, food items out there that I still haven't learned about, but this was a great little list of items. Uh, this was made by, this video was by Wandering Ravens, by the way, and I liked it. This was great. Like, it's very helpful, especially like their experience being Americans, going to the UK, actually getting to firsthand, like, observe and eat all these things and then explain it to little old me was very helpful. And I gotta say, I think 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10 of these dishes, I didn't know anything about. So this was quite the learning experience. It's amazing how much, or let me say, how similar it feels like so much of uh, things are, like in the UK and America. Certainly we speak the same language and we have a lot of the same like popular culture, but then you dive into something like this, the foods, and it's like a whole different world. It's like a whole different planet. I think that's awesome. I think that's so fun. So I really enjoyed this, to be honest. I was a little disturbed by some of these, but uh, in a good way. I, in, in a good way, the best way. Anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, uh, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to the UK, UK culture, Things about the UK I've never seen or learned about before. Feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.